Hey there. In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the Tick Tick features that I use most often. I use it on the desktop, I use it on my mobile phone when I'm out and about, and that is the email into Tick Tick feature. Now, this is a great way to get tasks that are in your email inbox out of your email and into Tick Tick where you can start taking action on them. Start setting priorities, start setting due dates, making sure that uh, you're getting things done. Um, so there's quite a few different ways that you can get emails out of your email inbox and into Tick Tick. And today we're going to talk about all the different ways, including if you use Tick Tick for work like I do, and maybe some of your work emails contain sensitive information that should not be in a third party application like Tick Tick. I'll show you how I get emails out of my work inbox and into Tick Tick in a safe and secure manner. Hello, I'm Joshua Best. All right, so I'm going to jump in here to my Gmail account. Now, this particular email address is the same email address that I signed up to my TickTick -tick account with. And that's an important point for this first method of getting your emails out of your email inbox and into TickTick. -tick. And so you can see that I have an email in here. Uh, it's from Joshua Best, and the subject is TickTick -tick Test Email. And I'm just going to click on that so you can see the contents of it. So it basically says, hey Josh, please test out sending emails into TickTick -tick and check out this link. And here's a link that says TickTick -tick Apps and it links to some URL. We really can't see it from here. And then below that it says, and this image that is also a link. And then the other thing we have on here is a PDF attachment. And I'll just click on that to open it so you can see it. It says TickTick -tick Test and it's got the TickTick uh, -tick -tick logo there. So let's say this is an email in my inbox, which it is, and I want to make it a task in TickTick. -tick. Well, the easiest way to do that, if I'm using the same email address that I signed up to TickTick -tick with, is just to go ahead and click the forward button, and in the to, type to do at mail.ticktick.com. And let me move my mouse out of the way so you can see that to do at mail.ticktick.com. Again, it's critical that this is coming from the same email address that you signed up to TickTick -tick with. This is a bit of a generic email address that TickTick -tick uses to receive incoming tasks, but it doesn't know which TickTick -tick inbox or whose TickTick -tick inbox to send this task to unless it's coming from your same email account that you signed up to TickTick -tick with. Then it can tie those accounts together and say, yep, this is gonna be Josh's task. Uh, go ahead and send it to his inbox. All right, so I'm gonna just go ahead and click the send button. So I forwarded this email to that to do at mail.ticktick.com email address. And now let me jump over to TickTick. -tick. It will take just a minute for this email to send and come into TickTick. -tick. All right, so we see the email came into our inbox here. We can see the task name is the same as the email subject. It says forward colon tick tick test email since we forwarded that email. I'm going to go ahead and click on it so we can see how the contents of the task look. So it's the entire email contents, but there's a couple things I want to point out in here. And number one is the links. So if you recall, this tick tick apps was an actual link. We're here when it becomes a task in tick tick. That is no longer a link. It's basically just plain text. And then after that, in brackets, it posts the actual URL that the link was going to direct you to. And I think that's very beneficial because sometimes within emails, you don't always know where the links are going to send you to. And if you forward it into TickTick, -tick, it spells it out for you. Hey, it's going to take you right to this URL. And same with the image that was a link. So you can see the image kind of gets taken away. And instead, we have the link that the image was going to send us to if we happen to click on it. And these are clickable links also, so we can click on these links and it'll take us right to that URL. Um, let me go back to tick tick here. And the last thing I want to point out here is the attachment from the email. It comes through just fine. I can click on it. It pulls it right up. All right, so that's method number one. And again, that works only if you're sending from the same email address as your tick tick email address. Now, let's say that I have multiple email addresses. Maybe I have a couple personal email addresses and a work email address. And maybe every once in a while, my spouse gets an email that I would rather her just forward it into my TickTick -tick inbox and that way I can take action on it. 
Well, that's also possible using uh, the second method. So to start with, I'm gonna go up to my profile picture within TickTick, go to settings. Down here towards the bottom is the calendar and mail options. And right here in the middle is the email section. And it lets us know about the first method. It says you can email your tasks to to do at mail.ticktick.com via your registered email. That was method number one. Or you can send tasks to your unique email address. And then here it gives us our unique email address. So this is for our TickTick account specifically. And this is the way that TickTick will tie the tasks coming in to our TickTick account is now by this unique email address. And that allows us to send from any email account. All right, and to copy it, you just click on it and it lets you know that you've copied it. And if you happen to want to reset it, say you make a YouTube video and you happen to publicize your unique email address and all of a sudden you happen to get a random tasks showing up in your inbox, uh, you might want to reset your unique email address. And you can do that just by clicking on the uh, reset link over here to the right of your email address. All right, so I've copied this unique email address and now I'm gonna go to a different email account. So this time I'm gonna be in an Outlook email. And this is not the same email account that is set up with my TickTick. So I have the same email sent here and I'm going to forward this into TickTick uh, similar to the first approach. I'm going to click the forward button. And in the two this time, instead of using that generic email address, I'm just going to hit control V to paste my unique email address and then click the send button. And we'll flip back over to TickTick. I'm going to get out of these settings by clicking the done button. And here we see the second email come through this time coming through my unique TickTick email address from an unrelated email account. And the contents of the task look very similar. So I won't go through all of that again, but that is method number two if you're using multiple email addresses or a different email account than what is associated with your TickTick account. All right, so those are the two methods that I've been using for the longest time and they are tried and true, they work seamlessly. It only takes uh, a few seconds for the emails to get into my TickTick account. So I've often wondered about the like Gmail add-ins and Outlook add-ins, why would I ever use that? Because this seems so easy. But let's go take a look at those and we can see why we might want to use uh, either the Gmail add-in or the Outlook add-in. All right, so in order to install either the Gmail add-in or the Outlook add-in, start by going to the TickTick uh, main page, ticktick.com, and up on their top menu is an apps link. If you click on that, this is where you would download your Windows app, your Mac app, and so forth. But if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there is the Outlook add-in and the Gmail add-on. So I'm gonna start by looking at the Gmail add-on, and I'm gonna click on the Download on G Suite button. And I'm just going to go ahead and click the install button. All right, so I get a pop up here. It says TickTick needs some permission to start installing. I'm going to click continue. It asks me which Gmail account I want to associate this with. I'll select my Gmail account. It says it's sending me a verification code to my phone. All right, so I type that in and hit the next button. It says it wants access to all these things, which I'm okay with. I'll click allow. And now it says that the Gmail add-on has successfully been installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the done button. And now let me go back to my Gmail account and I'm just gonna click the refresh button here. All right, now you'll notice over on the right side, you know, there's a link to calendar, keep notes, uh, but down towards the bottom now, there's a TickTick -tick icon, and that's the TickTick -tick Gmail add-on. So let's say that I'm on this same email that we've been working with, and instead of forwarding it, I'm going to use the Gmail add-on to send this to my TickTick -tick inbox. I'll start by clicking on the TickTick -tick icon over here on the right side. And right up at the top, I see I can select a due date. By default, it's set to none, but on the drop-down, I can select today, tomorrow, next week, or next month. I'm going to select tomorrow. Here's the task name, 
This is the email subject and I can change this if I want to. So I'm going to add Gmail add-on to the task name here. And I can also add to the task contents if I want to. So I'm going to say from the Gmail add-on. And if I keep scrolling down to the bottom, I can even select which list I want this to go to. So it doesn't have to go to my inbox. It can go to any list that I have set up. Now in my TickTick -tick demo account, I only have one other list set up right now and that's tasks. So I'm going to select that list. And then I can also set a priority, either no priority, low, medium, or high. I'm going to set this as a low priority. And then down at the bottom, I click the add task button. All right, so it tells me my email has been added to TickTick. -tick. So I'm going to flip back to my TickTick. -tick. And now you'll notice over on my tasks list, there's a little one there for my one task that's there. And now we can see the task that got sent from the Gmail add-on. All right, and right away we can see it's a blue priority, meaning low priority. And the due date is set for tomorrow. We can see that the um, task name has the Gmail add-on that I added to the end of it. And even the task description has from the Gmail add-on that I added to it. But a couple things you'll notice about the task details that are slightly different than when we forwarded the email into TickTick. -tick. One is all the links are gone, right? All the links turned into plain text and it removed my image. And also, uh, there's no attachment on here. So I lose some of that. And to me, that's okay because one of the things you'll notice is that the task name is formatted just a little bit differently. It's got brackets around the task name and it's got a little chain link over here to the right. And what this means is that this is a link and I can actually click on this link and it'll bring up the email that this came from. And to me, this is a real game changer because let's say that this is my work email, right? And instead of fake tick tick links and fake attachments, it's got real information in it, sensitive to my company maybe, that I don't want to necessarily send out to tick tick or anywhere else. Uh, I want to keep it safe and secure within my work email. Uh, so in that case, what I would do is I would come to the email, I click on the Gmail add-on, all right, I set my due date, let's say next week, I change the task name if I want to, but here's the important part. I remove all the task contents. And the reason why is that might contain the sensitive information that I don't want to send out to TickTick. -tick. And since I have that link back from TickTick -tick to my actual email, I don't need it. And when I need that information, I can just click the link that'll take me right back to the email. And so again, I'll set my, my list and my priority. This time I'll select medium priority and go ahead and add task. All right, so let me flip over to TickTick. -tick. I added this one to the inbox, and here it is with the medium priority. And again, there's no sensitive information in here. In fact, there's really no information at all other than the task name, which is the email subject. But again, I'm able to have it in TickTick, -tick, prioritize it, give it a due date. I can add comments here if I need to. But the important part is that when I'm ready to do this task and I need that information, I can just click this link and it takes me right to that email. And so the information is never lost. Instead, it stays safe and secure within my work email. All right, so one of the things I'm not gonna cover in this video is the Outlook add-on. I think it works pretty similar to the Gmail add-on, so it's not worth going over. But there is one other option for getting emails out of your inbox and into TickTick, -tick, and that is the Chrome extension. And this is actually the method I use. So I don't actually use the Gmail add-in. I use the Chrome extension. And let me show you that. So if we go back to the TickTick -tick website and click on the apps link again, and if you scroll down, right down here in the middle is the Chrome extension. And you just click on download on Chrome and then say add to Chrome. And it says again, you have to give it permission. I say add extension. And it lets you know that the TickTick -tick extension has been added to Chrome. Now, the TickTick -tick Chrome extension does quite a few different things, and I'm not going to cover all of it today. What I'm going to concentrate on is how it impacts emails. All right, so let me go back to my Gmail. 
And one of the things you'll notice right away is that there's a new button right up here in the menu of the email. And it says add to TickTick. -tick. Now we didn't see this button before, so this comes with the TickTick -tick Chrome extension. And it works very similarly to the Gmail add-on, but there is at least one extra benefit to using this method. So I'm on the same email again, and I'm gonna click the add to TickTick -tick button. So it pops up in a separate window here. And again, I get the due date, but when I click on the due date, I get the full functionality of selecting the due date. I can pick any date, and I can even add time here. So let me just pick um, Saturday the 8th, and time of 11.30, and then I can click OK. So that is slightly different than the Gmail add-on. If you remember, the Gmail add-on only gave us a couple options. I believe it was today, tomorrow, next week, and next month. Whereas here, I can select any date and even the time. And then similarly to the uh, Gmail add-on, I can select a priority, I can change the task name, I can add task details, and down at the bottom, I can change the list that it gets added to, and then I click the Add button. And just like all the other methods, when I come over here to TickTick, -tick, I added this one to the Tasks list, and here it is with the high priority. Now this one again, the task details show up slightly different. So they are similar to the Gmail add-on in that they removed the links entirely and also the attachment but it also removes some of the formatting you'll notice. So if I click over to my Gmail add-on task, you can see it kept the formatting that the email had, whereas the Chrome extension version removed the formatting so it's all just kind of strung together. So, all right, so definitely pros and cons to each method. I definitely think it's a good idea to get tasks out of your email inbox and into TickTick -tick where you can start prioritizing, setting due dates, making sure that you're getting them done. Uh, but depending on your situation, you know, you might use one of those four different methods. For me, since I use TickTick -tick for work a lot, the Gmail add-on and also the Outlook add-on or the Chrome extension are the ways to go for me. That way I can remove all the sensitive information from the task, but I can keep that link back to the specific email. So let me know in the comments. Do you use one of these four methods to get tasks out of your email inbox and into TickTick? And if so, let me know which method you use primarily and why. Well, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.